Hello, Pastor. Uh, this is Stephen Villarreal, missionary to Mexico and Faith Baptist Church. Uh, we were actually at your missions conference not too long ago, and so I met most of the congregation, and uh, I think I've probably met you. Uh, if not, maybe on our next round, uh, we'll come by and, uh, and meet everybody. But uh, I just want to say thank you for your hospitality. Thank you for your encouragement. We left refreshed from the missions conference. And uh, Pastor uh, asked me to give this message. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, open the Bible and just give something that the Lord uh, has put on my heart. And I know if you open your heart, your ears, it will be a great blessing to you and it will help you. Uh, these are the words of Jesus and uh, it's a great challenge to myself and I know it will be to you. I want to turn to Matthew chapter 7 and we're going to read several verses. So uh, if you have your Bible wherever you're at, we're going to go to Matthew chapter 7. And I actually want to start in verse 13. Uh, this, these are very important key verses. Uh, chapter 7 verse 13. Now, in the context of this passage, uh, this is a very famous, actually most theologians say it's the most famous sermon that Jesus preached. It's three chapters, chapter 5 of Matthew, chapter 6, chapter 7, and um, a lot of his most famous uh, teachings are in this passage. Like, you remember the Beatitudes. He starts out, blessed are the poor in spirit, blessed are they that mourn, blessed are those that hunger and thirst after righteousness, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy, blessed are the pure in heart. Uh, God wants us to be pure in our heart, for they shall see God. The the the, the pure you are, the more righteous you are, the closer you're going to be to God because he's pure, righteous, and holy, holy, holy. And the, the Bible, Jesus taught, blessed are the peacemakers, blessed are those for uh, thirst after righteousness, I mean, suffer for righteousness sake. And uh, and as I read these these chapters, I found uh, the this passage that you've probably heard where Jesus said, I am um, the, the light. And he, and he also, he, he told the disciples, ye are the light. You're going to bring the gospel to this world. You are the salt. You are going to make a difference in this world. And he, he preached on anger. He preached on the subject of divorce, on lust, on oaths, retaliation, on love. You can find all these in the first chapter, in the first sermon part uh, section in chapter 5 of Matthew. Then chapter 6, uh, we, we find lessons on giving, on fasting. You, do you remember the Lord's Prayer? Well, uh, that's in chapter 6 of Matthew, the famous Lord's Prayer. Matthew 7, he begins the, the, Jesus begins um, in chapter 7 with, Don't be a hip, hypocritical judge. Uh, you, you need to really examine yourself before you, you start trying to you know, take out the, the beam in the other person's eye or the little speck. And, and, and ch verse 7 of Matthew 7 uh, the Bible says, Ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. And then he gives the golden rule. The, the, this is just a very, very famous part of our lives because this is something that will help you no matter where you're at. The Bible says in verse 7, Jesus uh, says, Therefore all things whatsoever ye would have that men should do unto you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Okay, so you need to think about others and how you would like to be treated. And all these truths, there's, there's many others I could mention, but these are just a few that I, I just pointed out as I was reading through these three chapters. And um, this is a very famous sermon, and, and he's, he has the disciples seated. There's other people around listening, and he preaches this message. And this sermon has been preached all over the world because of the content, because of the importance of it, because Jesus is giving uh, the truth, the righteousness of God, and he's giving encouragement to the Christians. And then he comes to the end of the chapter and uh, the end of his sermon. He's concluding his sermon. And this is the, the words that he gave us. I want to read in verse 13. The Bible says, enter ye in the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be that go in thereat. Verse 14, because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth to life. And, and, and the Bible says, and few there be that find it. Then he goes on, he says, beware 
of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. This is a very interesting passage. I want to jump to verse uh, 24. The Bible says, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon the house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. Verse 26, And every one that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon the house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. And it came to pass that when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine. These are very well-known passages. You've, you've heard these verses. But... There's the truth that I want to give you. And Jesus teaches us in all three of these instances about the, the, the gate and about the trees and about the, the foundation. He's going to give us a lesson on the choices that we make in life. But before I want to continue, I just want to give, let's go ahead and pray and ask God to speak to our hearts. And if you have something that is blocking you from listening at this moment, I, I'm going to pray right now. And I ask you to pray in your own heart, God, take this away so I can pay 100% attention to your word because this is God speaking to us at this moment. Father, thank you for this opportunity to come to Faith Baptist Church and to the young people. And I just pray that you would help me to be able to communicate this message effectively for your honor and glory. I pray that if any, uh, all, the, all the ones who are listening, I pray that you would speak to them individually and help them wherever they're at to understand that our decisions, they have consequences and they bear fruit. And our decisions, there's an outcome that is very predictable, Father. And I just ask that you would help me in this moment to communicate that effectively. I love you and I thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, guys, so I wanna, I wanna say this. Um, I have, I'm not really big on numerology in the Bible. I haven't really studied it. I've heard from different sources, but I did find it interesting that numbers do have a certain amount of meaning. Um, the Bible says, uh, I mean, you, you've heard it, um, the number seven, what is this? The number of completion, the number of perfection, uh, the creation, seven. And, and then uh, you, you also have uh, Jericho. Uh, I, I read this story to my son a lot. The, the, the walls came tumbling down. But how many times did the army of Israel have to march around Jericho before they entered the promised land? Seven times. And then uh, the, the, there were seven priests that, 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 that had seven trumpets. And, and God just told them on the seventh time around, uh, on the seventh day, you will sound the trumpets and the walls God will bring delivery. And then I think about uh, Naaman. Uh, Elisha told Naaman to dip himself seven times in the river and he will be cleansed of his righteousness. Seven times, you just find it time after time, the number of completion. And remember the great tribulation, how many years? How many years until it finishes or until it comes to its completion? It's going to be seven years of great tribulation on the earth and then uh, then the, the war of the, the Armageddon. And, and then I was thinking about the number 40. Uh, 40 is known as the number of probation, the number of trial. Uh, very interesting as I just studied different uh, stories. We have Israel wondered how many years in the wilderness? 40 years. And, and this number is known as the, the number of trial, probation. So we see Jonah, he preached 40 uh, days in Nineveh and they repented. It rained 40 days and 40 nights when Noah's flood came. Jesus was tempted how many days? 40 days. The number six is a, num is a number of man. We'll have the, the mark of the beast is 666. But I want to 
focus on the number two because in this passage uh, it's very interesting how we're going to notice the number two is known as the number of decision you come to a fork in the road and and this number when when god uses it most of the time is talking about a decision that you have to make there's two ways there's two paths and and one is going to lead to a certain direction and the other to the opposite and in this passage, Jesus is concluding his sermon. He's given his heart. He's preached with all of his strength. And, and he's, he's put his heart into it. He's, he's given the wisdom of God. He's communicated the truths of heaven to mankind, to his disciples and to those around. And as he's on a hill, he's preaching. And he comes to the end of his, uh, uh, of his sermon. And he demands a decision. He demands a decision from his audience. You see, Jesus concludes with the number two. In this passage, we find, as he concludes his sermon, we find two gates, two different paths that lead to two different directions. And then he comes and he says, wait, I want to show you something else. There's two trees. Two trees. One that's going to show you that decisions have consequences you make a decision that that decision is going to bring forth good fruit or bad fruit and then he comes to the very end and he gives us two foundations one foundation shows us that the decisions we make are very predictable in their outcome Jesus is preaching I, I was find it I found it very interesting that Jesus that this is called a sermon, and the reason why is because a sermon is a little bit different than just a, a lesson or a Sunday school lesson from a teacher. Teaching, there's a difference between teaching and preaching. And I remember I was in uh, in Bible college, and and one professor told me this: teaching is imparting knowledge and understanding to another person, but preaching it imparts knowledge, but with the purpose of bringing that person to a decision and that is what Jesus is doing he gives us a lot of truth but he commands and he, he demands a decision you're either going to choose to listen or you're choosing to disobey you're either choosing to build your life upon me or you're choosing to build your life upon self you 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 can decide to do whatever you want or you can decide what God wants for you but there is a true consequence for whatever you choose in this life whether it's with family whether it's your relationship with Christ whatever you decide there are consequences I want to notice number one there's two ways that Jesus gives us and he teaches us that choices are are very personal. I want to give you each one of these. They're going to teach you something about choices because Jesus is bringing us to the number two, the number of decision. And he's demanding a decision. And number one, he gives us two gates and two ways. Verse 13, the Bible says this in, in Matthew 7, verse 13. Enter ye at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. What is God saying? He's saying there's two ways, and this shows us that the decisions we make, they're personal. Many are going down the broad path, which has a wide gate that ends in destruction. The verse is very clear. And few are going down a narrow path that has a narrow gate, which leads to eternal life. You say, Brother Stephen, why is the path so narrow? It's because very few people are trotting on that path. You see, I, I explored, uh, me and my brothers, that's all I did. I would go to the desert, to the mountains, I would hike. That was my passion. And I noticed that some of the paths were very, very thin and very slim. Do you know why? Because very few people would trot on that. But you start getting a lot of people on this path, man, that path just widens up. You know that because you've been hiking. But Jesus is telling us that this path is narrow. But I believe it's narrow because so few are making the right decision. They're letting other people dictate their own choices. But, but Jesus is saying, listen, the crowd has nothing to do with your choices. Notice the first part. Enter ye. Jesus is very specific. You have to make a decision. 
God doesn't have grandchildren. He only has children. You have to make a personal decision to accept Christ or you will reject him personally. Your father cannot make a decision for you to go to heaven. Your pastor cannot help you and make a decision for you to have a relationship with Christ. You personally have to make a decision and you personally have to go through the door who's Jesus Christ and go on this narrow path. The multitudes have nothing to do with your personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Jesus is teaching us here you have to make the personal decision to enter into the door of heaven, which is Jesus Christ. And that's why Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. It is so important. That's why Ezekiel, the prophet, he said very clearly, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. Proverbs, Psalm, the Solomon said, if thou be wise, thou shalt be wise for thyself. But if thou scornest, thou alone shalt bear it. It is very clear that you will bear your own iniquity, your choices have consequences, but they're personal. This is the first lesson. Enter ye. You have to enter the gate. And I encourage you today, if you've never come through the gate of Jesus Christ and giving your life to him and trusting him as your personal Lord and Savior and repenting of your sin, today is the day. Jesus said, come unto me all ye who are heavy laden and burdened. Come and I will give you rest. Jesus said, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pastures. Jesus loves you and he wants you to make the decision to come to him. That's why he says, enter ye. But then we find two trees. We already read the passage. And for time's sake, I'm not going to read it all over again. But we find towards the end and in verse, um, let me go over to verse 20, I believe it is. Actually, uh, verse 19, every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast in the fire. I want you to look one verse before that. Here it is. Um, verse, uh, verse 17, even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. Jesus comes to number two again. Two trees that bear two different types of fruit. One that bears evil evil fruit that is later destroyed and good fruit that beareth good and that helps and that edifies and strengthens and that will last. Two trees, very distinct. This teaches us that choices have products. Choices are not only personal. You have to make the decision. Ye have to make the decision. No, they're also, they have products. Every choice that you make personally will bring about a consequence. You can choose God or you can choose self. You can choose to listen to God's word and listen to what I'm saying and what Jesus preached. This is his word. Or you can choose to scoff and laugh and scorn at God. But do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh, Jesus, uh, the Bible says, uh, he, he will reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. You see, you can mock Christians. You can mock Jesus Christ and laugh at Christianity. And you can make fun of the Bible and what it says and its teachings. But there will be a day of reckoning. There will be a day where you will give an account for every decision that you make. He that hath the Son, the Bible says, hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. You see, according to God, there are losers and there's winners. You accept Jesus and his word and the truth that he has given to us from heaven, or you can reject it. But if you reject it, you're a loser. In the end, you will lose. You accept the gift of salvation. You accept what Jesus has offered us. You accept the word of God and you build your life upon Christ. And in the end, you will be a winner. And that is what I'm trying to communicate. I'm just sharing what has already been written 2,000 years ago by the, by the Messiah, the Prince of Peace, the God of gods and Lord of lords, the King of kings, the one who gave his life for you and rose with power and victory over the grave. And he says... He is that way. He says there are consequences for your decisions. 
He says there's good and there's bad fruit. Two trees that show us that your decisions have products. I tell the atheist and the scornful and those who mock Christianities from different places, you can go ahead and laugh at those who try to live godly in Christ Jesus. You, you can laugh at me as I preach. You can laugh at those who try to have convictions through the word of God and to go out and soul win. You can tear the tracks in their face. You can get the Bible and try to burn it, but your, con your, your decisions have consequences in the end and you'll stand before a holy God and you'll be judged by your creator. So I challenge you, remember your decisions have products. Job said this, even as I have seen, they that plow iniquity and sow wickedness reap the same. Whatever you sow, you will reap. Two ways teach us that choices are personal. Two trees show us that choices have products. And then we have two buildings, two foundations. And these show us that your choices are very predictable. You see, it's very obvious. You build your, your house on an uncertain foundation there's going to be problems. My parents over in Mexico, I lived in their house for two years. Uh, I remember there were cracks in the wall here and over there and the floor is coming up. And then the architect said, because the foundation, they did not build they, on a good foundation. They, they didn't dig, they didn't build anything. They just put a block there. Their house is going to crumble pretty soon. You see, an architect, he checks, his, he checks the weather, he checks the location, he checks the foundation. He, 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 he thinks of when he builds his house about the storm or the tornado or the hurricane, whether they're building on the coast or, or, or they think about earthquake zones, wherever they build, they're thinking about that because they know that, that it is going to be tested by the heat of the sun, by the winter of cold, by, by the, the, the natural elements of the world. It's going to be tried. And Matt, I tell you, your faith is going to be tried. Your actions, your decisions, they're going to be tried in the end. And that's why Jesus comes to the end and he says, whatever decision you make is pretty predictable. The outcome of it, if you build in on yourself, you build on your own knowledge and your finite understanding of the universe and, and of spiritual truth, and you try to create your own little world and your own life, in the end, it's going to be destroyed but you build on Jesus Christ. You build on the truths of God's word. When the storm comes and rages, even when the trials hit your home and your life, you will stand firm in the darkest of hours because your source of strength and foundation is Jesus Christ, the Lord. I challenge you today if you're not saved, enter you, enter ye through the narrow gate, who's Jesus Christ, and give your life to him. I encourage you today, recap what decisions you've been making, whether it's buying a car, whether it's the university, your career, whether it's the choices to obey or disobey your parents, because your decisions have consequences. And number three, what are you building upon? Are you building upon your own, uh, your own lust over your, your own um, philosophy, over your materialism, over your own bank account, your car, which can be destroyed in a second? Are you building for today? And are you building upon the sand? That's what Jesus said. Or are you listening to God's word? And are you applying it to your life saying, God, I don't want my choice. I don't want my choices to bear consequences of destruction. Your decisions are very predictable. How many times, I'll end with this, how many times have you made a decision and you knew that that decision was going to lead you to despair, to pain, to sorrow, to destruction, and you still went down that pain, that path? You knew the outcome, and that's what Jesus is saying. The outcome of your decisions, they're very predictable. Make the right choice. Because the whole purpose of Jesus' sermon and what my message is today is that you would make a decision to come to Christ and make the choice to build your life upon the Word of God. And the words of Christ will never leave you and will never come out void. 
there is a decision to make. Either build on self or build on Christ. Thank you so much for listening. I pray that this message was a blessing. Thank you, Pastor and Faith Baptist Church and all you who are listening. Again, God bless you. Have a blessed day.